Disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent. Listener discretion is advised. Stepping out of the bounds and context of how you're established. There's a great song lyric by the Foo Fighters that goes, Down crooked stairs and sideways glances comes the king of second chances, reminding us that every step of the journey is equally as important. My next guest is the definition of that journey. You may all know him as the founding drummer of Yellow Card. He no longer plays with them, but he plays with Evergreen Terrace, Crash Party, and his own project, LP3. We discuss his musical journey, plus a lot more. I'd like to welcome Longinu Parsons III to Caught on the Mic today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Caught on the Mic. Ladies and gentlemen, I very rarely open up with an anecdote, but I'm going to open up with one here. From 2008 to 2010, the band Yellow Card was on a hiatus. And I say this with all due respect involved with the other band that I'm going to mention. But in 2009, the Rev from Avenged Sevenfold tragically passed away. And anybody that listens to this show regularly knows I am a musician. I was in bands for years. So when Avenged Sevenfold said that they were going to keep going and keep pressing on, I was on a message board. It wasn't Facebook at the time, but it was like a local music message board or whatever. And people were saying, so who do you see taking up the mantle in Avenged Sevenfold? And I only thought of one person one drummer that I thought was badass enough to do it, and it was my next guest. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> he didn't take the spot or get the spot, but my next guest, Lajanu Parsons the third, more affectionately known as LP. How you doing, man? Man, it's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. So did anybody reach out from that camp when that happened back in the day? No, not at all. I actually didn't even know about it until uh it was it was way later. The Rev and I were friends. Um yeah. like four tours we'd done together and super sweet dude. Like like I, I learned so many drum tips from him on, you know double bass and just you know being a a performer for such i mean they were they were massive i mean still are you know what i mean like massive yeah just such a sweet dude and when he passed like it it actually i was on tour when i found out i was like wait a minute no he really yeah that's the way no way it was like it was like one of those things where i was like wait no way uh you know it's like another one you know great drummer just gone you know i remember once i found out about it it was like this the spot was already filled up like i was like oh man now uh, who is i think it was what brooks wackerman well before brooks it was uh mike portnoy did that album with them and did that subsequent tour there you go yeah see i didn't even know that so <laughs> <laughs> man i tell you what though i sincerely mean it i i think i've believe it or not and i know you've met a million people i have crossed paths with you three four times I remember 2006 when Lights and Sounds came out. You guys played the opening ceremonies to the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska, where I'm from. And that was so amazing. My The drummer from my band at the time and I went and met you and he was, of course, in awe. And you were just like, just call me LP. Just call me LP because he was talking your (laughs) damn ear off. But man, I, I saw you guys probably three times that year, but... You've you've been one of my favorite drummers for a long time. Man, thank so. you so much, man. That really means a lot. I really love that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for taking the time and doing this podcast. You sound like you're a pretty busy guy. I was writing down all of your music projects before uh-huh. we started yeah. recording and getting on this call. And I was like, shit, man, do you ever get a break? You know, um, I'm not I don't really like breaks too much, uh, you know, I look at it like, uh, and and I mean this, it's going to sound weird the way I'm saying it, but it's going to make sense. Like, so I, you know, I've been married now for five years. I've been with her for 10 years, you know? So whenever I'm not doing, you know, touring or out playing a gig, I spend my time with my family at home. 
mm-hmm. you know, so I don't look at it as a, uh, you know, downtime, but I'm also working all the time. So I'm working on the next move. So I have, I mean, just to list a few, you know, I'll try to list all of them if I can, if I can remember all of them that I'm currently doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh i'll st- how about this i'll start with uh the like the stuff that i've been doing and i'll get to the current stuff but i've i've done things uh recordings and such with like 10 foot pole stages and stereos my band this legend and i've had lp3 and then uh well actually this legend is now um as of like probably a week ago we've decided to resurface and uh we're getting ready to record some a new record. We actually have most of the songs uh, ready to record now or mm-hmm. for writing to record now. I'm very excited about that. I've also got a band called uh, Crash Party, which Crash Party is uh, that's I'm super excited. I, we, we have we have a few songs now. Uh, we have a killer lineup for those of you that love smoking musicians and like to listen to like a badass bass player, badass guitar player and a badass vocalist. You know, Shannon, uh, that's our our singer, Shannon Fitzgerald. Look him up. Um, he's he's an incredible vocalist and a, and a performer. He's just a he's a he's a showman. He knows how to get out there to the people and, and, and really suck them in. You know, he's, he's a great performer. Then we've got Mark Mahone on bass, who's just, you know, he's a badass. It's truly an honor to play with those guys. And then you've got Aaron uh on guitar he's, he's the next big thing I, I love i love playing with him i think that uh their minds are in the right place you know and then mm-hmm. we've got lou lou rubino uh he plays guitar and keys so we have a guitar player guitar player bass player singer and drummer and uh lou's an incredible art he's played with so many so many badass big people and he's just a, an amazing person and he's a shredder you know he's a badass also everyone's just I, i'm enjoying what i'm doing with them and then um, I play in a band called Evergreen Terrace, and um, and I, I've got a that that is like I'm also excited about that too. I'm excited about everything. Um, yeah, because you, you've been recording recently with Evergreen Terrace, haven't you? We are currently recording. Yes, yeah. uh, we're in pre-production right now, um, nice. and, and uh, we've got some pretty awesome things coming. Um, at least I think so. I hope you guys like it too. But um, definitely very heavy. And uh, also melodic too, as well. There's mel- melody and heaviness, and you know, it's it's right where my heart sets in hardcore. You know, a lot like I really love it. Like a lot of people don't know that about me. Um, you know, I I played in a uh, yellow card for 17 years. In fact, started the band with Ben. You know, mm-hmm. back in the in, in the early mid 90s. You know, it's like hardcore has just been a thing. But some of the first, do you remember Columbia House? Yes, yes. So, so, so this is how it all happened with me. Um, Columbia, it was a combination of things, right? There was Columbia House that happened first, and I didn't know any of the bands that I was seeing, but I wanted to. I was like so intrigued. I was like, okay, like I've got to get this, and I was watching uh, Beavis and Butthead. Hmm a lot and it would show all the bands and i would sit there with like a a notepad and a pen and i would say every band that came on that i love you know the song i love i'll write it down be like okay oh yeah halloween okay (laughs) 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 and i was like wait a minute all right right." so the new paper came in i got columbia house and i got cowboys from hell and uh well i didn't know who they were at the time because i was literally going by the pictures that they had there the records you could choose from Mm-hmm. It was like Nirvana and utero, you know, in utero. Uh, it was, it was. Uh, I got Slayer. Decade of Aggression was on there, I think, one time. And then I got Green Day. I got Soundgarden. And I was just like, man, this is this is awesome. It's like I love this music. It just it gravitated towards me. Grunge, metal, hardcore. Mm-hmm. But Pantera became. I mean, shoot, I've got Dimebag tattooed on my leg and his guitar on my arm. We actually were friends. And, he, you know, I wouldn't say friends like, uh, you know, Dime, Dime and I weren't friends that type because we only got to meet once. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, which is an interesting story, which is what I'm about to say. But uh, Vinny and I have been friends for years, mm-hmm. all the way up until the point that he passed away. Oh, wow. Like Vinny, he's come to my shows before, you know, it was like a whole thing. And um, but the whole thing with Dime is, is like I wouldn't I wouldn't be playing rock if it weren't for Dimebag. Right. And Vinny for that matter. And I mean that boldly because 
my father, uh, when I was coming up, my father, you know, he's a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. And we have bands together called Tribal Disorder. We've got Afro Blue Funk. We've got 21 Blue. We've got Launch New Parsons Ensemble. And then I have LP3. And um, but for those that don't understand, like back in the day, you know, for metal, jazz, for metal and, and rock, for metal, those are those are worlds that very rarely touch paths together. You know, it was right. very separated. You know, and from the past, it was it may have been through race, you know, it may have been through, you know, like not race, but like racism, you know, like just in general, you know, um, or coming out of it to where it was like a lot of like, you know, a political movement. Well, through time, I feel like that that has changed, you know, immensely. And like a lot of people are like, OK, like, let's let's mix all these different things, because, wow, like we're you can you know, it all came from a source. You know, music came from one source and then it evolved. So with that being said, when when it can evolve like that, you know, where else can it go? But it never touched. So when I discovered Dimebag, it was like this. I was, I don't even know how young, I think I was like 13. And uh, my godfather did voiceover work for, you know, for a lot of people, he was Yosemite Sam, a lot of people like that. And, um, uh, He's like, hey, man, I have a ticket to go see Pantera. This is out. This out, I was probably like 14, 13, 14, 14 years old. You know, because I, you know, they back then they did the whole advertisement on TV. Remember how it was like when I showed. Oh, show, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, see Pantera. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yep. Pantera, typo negative, UNF Arena. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> dude funny story i was running on a treadmill yesterday so the the reunited the pantera tribute you know the one with zach wild yeah. and such they're yeah. coming to lincoln here next week on valentine's day of all days oh, wow. and oh, i'm wow. on the treadmill i shit you not they played a commercial like that for that show so that just makes me double down on the laughter oh, about man. it i was oh, like man. <laughs> oh man you think they'll play this love <laughs> 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 so so check this out like like i ended up um i had seated tickets right and I, right. Somehow ended up, I ended up on the floor like i got i know it sounds crazy but i literally got pushed onto the floor in general admission when i had a seated ticket at unf arena mm-hmm. so i didn't know what was going on i'd never even been in an arena for a show before you know at that point because i was like jazz was different right you know, a club we play like it's a lot you know a festival at that but a but a, an arena for a band is like unheard of so then i i smoked my first uh two hits of a joint that night <laughs> yep 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 i remember that and then i just remember the lights went out and it was the greatest show of my life like to date that that show and i, and I say this like people have asked me which i'll, I'll go into later about yellow card well, actually, this is about yellow card, but, um, you know, when you do, let's say like, okay, if you do something a lot, let's say like you're super famous to where like every record you put out is massive, every, um, or every movie you do is massive. Okay. There's nothing like that first one you do. Right. For me, like when people ask me, you know, of all the records I've sold, you know, et cetera, there's nothing like that first gold record. You know, because the difference is in anything you do, the gold record or, or when you when you start something, when you feel something that first time you feel it, you know, mm-hmm. it, it captures you and it, and it becomes a part of you because it's like a it's emotion. You know, it's, a, it's you're riding that wave. You're going with it. And man, let me tell you something. I got to meet Dimebag that night and um, I ended up backstage also by default. <laughs> I, had a, I had a seated ticket. <laughs> let me put that out there. I went from general admission to backstage at That's the meeting because i didn't know what i was doing and um there it was i met Dimebag, and that night i also got held gunpoint on my way home and the guy stole all my memorabilia oh my gosh yeah so so that's definitely a night you'll never forget no and then i started yellow card i start like with ben ben harper and i started yellow card just after that because i said i want to be in a rock band right that's how it happened that's crazy. Taking a step back here, it's a parallel that only other musicians understand is that diversity of interests, like where you can be into jazz and you can be into metal and you can be into straightforward rock or hip hop or anything along those lines. Cause I was very similar to you. I 
had so many Columbia House and BMG memberships, I couldn't count because my buddies and I, we would sign up under our real names and then start signing up under aliases. And then we'd sign each other up under aliases. And I found a lot of my initial like interest there, like Rage Against Machine, Cypress Hill. Oh, hell yeah. You know, and, and, and stuff along those lines. But I also like, I was a student of jazz as a kid myself, like nice. Dave Brubeck and stuff go. like that. And it's just, I, I love that about us as musicians that we can kind of realize and appreciate what we're really into while still honoring another genre. That's right. That's well, you, you know what? I bet you, um, and I know this just from experience, but like, I bet you, if you go up to your favorite artist, you know, like, let's say if you went up to, I don't know, I'm just going to throw one out there. Like, let's say if someone was like a Metallica fan and be like, who do you guys listen to? Oh, James listens to, you know, he could probably listen to, to funk. Maybe this other dude, you know, and, and you would never expect it because opposites attract, you know? It's right. Like, I mean, I'm, if you go through my playlist on my phone right now, okay, here you go. My favorite band right now that I've been listening to is a band called Downswing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I discovered them by going through Instagram. And, and I, I've No Solution is one of my favorite songs that I listen to right now. Um, that next down the line from that... Um, is Gideon. I really like Gideon a lot and Comeback Kid. Mm -hmm. Comeback Kid's awesome. Comeback Kid is probably yeah, one of my favorites. I played overseas with them when I was on tour with uh, Evergreen Terrace out there and they're freaking rocking, man. Oh yeah. A as a drummer, there's a there's a great clip online of Dave Grawl talking to Pharrell Williams and he was talking about how on the first Nirvana record, he lifted everything from disco. Like the... Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I and that's saw that. Fantastic. Yes. Yes, he even had the, the examples to show you. I was like, yes! oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. I was like, oh, <laughs> that guy's rad. <laughs> I've actually talked to uh, Dave. Like, he's well, he talked to me. He's, a, he's one of the nicest, sweetest dudes I've ever met. Oh, that's amazing. So we've kind of jumped into the middle of your story. We've jumped to kind of what's going on. Let's take a step back and let's talk a little bit more about the origin, kind of what brought you from yellow card to where you are now. So there's no real way for other way for me to say it. And then starting here, you know, my father raised me as a, you know, as a, to be a musician, not a jazz musician, rock musician, funk musician, but a musician in general. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he used to drive me around with my stick bag and go around and play with anybody. One thing about me is I always pull forward and I, I do what I have to do. I put 110% of my body into every bit of music that I put out there because it's who I am, soul-driven and all. It doesn't matter what genre it is. I can mold myself to it. Mm -hmm. You can put me... I mean, I played... I toured with Adam Lambert. I toured with, you know, Yellow Card. I've, you know, played with, you know, a 10-foot pole. Done stuff with... Now I Evergreen Terrace. I had Betrayal. You know, so it's all... It, all my genres go LPMD. You know, LPMD was my two piece that I had with uh, Miles Davis out in uh, California. And it was, you know, it's like a hip hop, you know, thing that we did together. That was awesome. Also had some success out of that. Um, you know, uh, but the list, it just goes, you know, it's like, I just want to keep moving musically wherever my body sends me mentally and physically is where I go. And yellow card is my, that's, that's the, that's the place in my heart because it was a creation that Ben and I, um, you know, Warren, uh, Todd, uh, Clary, Ben Dobson, and uh, Adam Stolnicker created, you know, back, you know, back then. And, and, and we, we created something that now is just this big thing. Like, it's, it's crazy to even look back and think, even with me not being out there with them, you know, yeah, sure. It, it you know, it, it does, uh, it stings to not be out there with those guys, you know, I would do it in a heartbeat if I could, you know, um, and uh, but, you know, just to see them out there killing it again, just to, to know that something that I helped create was able to still now in 2024 be bigger than ever, it seems, uh, with what they're doing. You know, it, it was, you know, I pat myself on the shoulder for being a part of that that time, spite of whatever, you know, differences may be you know, within the group, which on my end, I can tell you, I do not have any, um, it's like I said, I would, I would do it again in a heartbeat, you know, if they 
called me right now, I would do it. I think there was even a moment I offered to do it for free just to be out there with them. I wish them all the best. And uh, if things were to change and they were to give me a call to do it, hey, my bag's already packed. Love it. You started Yellow Card in the mid to late 90s. You get through the early 2000s. Ocean Avenue drops. It's colossal. Lights and sounds drops. It's colossal. How did that impact your life at that point in time? So this goes back to kind of when we talked about, uh, you know, your first time feeling something, you know. Um, Ocean Avenue for us was was when it was when it was real Mm -hmm. you know um that's when it was like okay look we're we're not we're no longer the (laughs) the small band from jacksonville florida anymore we're now the big band from jacksonville florida now approaching even you know even more ground now than ever and uh lights and sounds it was like a continuation of where we were but in a different form because it was you know i feel like that was a very political time for us yeah and uh having natalie main on our record and you know just all the features that we you know were a part of it was just it was a, it was a it was a thing but that first initial feeling you know when it carries you through life when you when we got signed we were hungry mm-hmm. literally four five people in an apartment you know some you know trying to barely make it ends meet, you know, doing whatever we could, you know, we worked it <clears throat> at a place called, uh, you know, we sold herbal breast enhancers and in Interex, Blasant and in Interex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did to make money and then, uh, play shows. And, um, uh, it was called why not productions yeah but uh you know that's that's what we had to do and uh so when ocean avenue happened next thing you know we were not having to buy ramen anymore you know right. or not or live on ramen i should say and uh and just you know living on the floor we went from that to just that feeling of kind of like you know that first time you you know, you have sex that first time you like eat, you know, chocolate for the first time, you know, or the first time you ride a Harley, you know, it's like that, that feeling of like, wow, like this is, this is incredible. I can't believe it. You don't know what to expect. I think that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. You don't know what to expect. So when it's happening, it's like that everything that happens, is like, wow, are you kidding me? This is insane. This is great. Then the next time you do it, which is like lights and sounds, you know, um, and then paper walls. That's when it's like, wow, okay. So instead of, oh, here you go. Here you go. I have a perfect example of what I'm trying to say on, on what you said. So it's like being, it's like that first time you sell out an arena, right? Your band's huge. Then you come through again next year. Now you've already sold it out, right? So right. You're, you're, where, where else can you go kind of thing, you know? So now instead of you saying, wow, I'm excited to have that many people in my venue, now it's like, oh, wow, I was 200 shy of a sellout. Right. Or I was, you know, 1,000 shy of a sellout, you know, or, or, or damn, man, like, like what? It's that damn, man, like what? <laughs> That's the issue because it's like it shouldn't be, you know. To be, I mean, you got to think, like, especially now that I've been playing a lot of gigs on my own, you know, uh, like I started my own thing. LP3 is my group and playing gigs where I'm excited to have, anybody come <laughs> right yeah you know, you make one person smile and that's that's everything you know and you just like oh man you know i gotta be the guy that's you know i gotta suck it up so i went from playing arenas to you know building my own brand you know and it's been amazing it's been great i've built a, a built a quite a fan base between st augustine jacksonville savannah carolinas alabama texas and now i'm i've got evergreen terrace and crash party <clears throat> and now this legend that's resurfacing, surfacing, which we're going to go out there and uh, do some damage. And I'm excited about everything. You know, I don't lo- like to stop working. I like to keep working. Yeah. You know, I like I like to stay active. I like to keep going, do what I'm doing. You know, where it brought me through life is right there. Yeah. Because now I know how to do it on my own. For sure. And it showed me how hard the uprising is, how hard the fall is, and what you have to do to pick back up. And you could either you could either 
give up and be a loser, so to say, or you can push each foot forward and be the best person you can be and the best man or woman or whatever you can be to, to succeed in life the way you're going to be. And that's the path that I chose is to be better, to do the things that I need to do to be the, the, the best musician and someone that I can teach. I teach, I teach kids, by the way. Right. Um, right. In school, I teach drums in a, in a school called a uh, Schroeder school of music. Uh, it's in Jacksonville, Florida. And um, I love all of my students. They're all amazing. Like they're, I have kids starting at five years old to 16. And, uh, and that's, what's rewarding to me is, is being able to teach, you know, the younger generation, because guess what? we're not going to take any of the money or houses or cars we have with us when we die, but we're going to leave something behind. And that's what I'm going to leave behind is a piece of me with them that they can, they can take and hopefully expand and teach to someone else, you know, to keep it going because that's how you live forever. I love that mentality. And you and I are about the same age. So we've seen a lot of trends kind of come and go in music. And I remember mid nineties, I was in a ska band and then third wave ska got, eaten up by new metal when it became big and new metal got eaten up by pop punk when it became big and pop punk got eaten up by indie rock. If you're paying attention to the periphery of mainstream music, but the nice thing about making music now, I imagine it's been some time since I've done it is that the fan base is just as diverse as we are. And there is into as many things as we are. Moving forward past Yellow Card, you had the opportunity to take up the mantle in Adam Lambert's band. How did that come about? To start things off, I didn't know I was auditioning for him when I went for the audition, by the way. I thought I was auditioning for American Idol. Yeah. And uh, there was this guy named Barry Squire, and he said, hey, I have an audition for you. Come on through. It's at center staging. I was like, okay, cool. So I showed up. I'd never done anything like that before, and there were probably about a hundred drummers lined up in the line outside, but I thought I had to go sign up. So I walked right past everybody walked right inside and it was like freaking 10 or 10 30 in the morning. And, uh, all I saw was a drum set and a bunch of people that seemed very important standing inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my first reaction, cause I was nervous. I was like, okay. I said, hi everybody. How you doing? And I just waved and kept walking, walked up to the drums. And he said, what's, what's your name? I was like, launch a new Parsons LP. He goes, Oh, uh, I didn't see you didn't sign up here, sign up here. So I was like, oh, cool. And I just went and audition. Next thing you know, to fast forward, all those people were gone after lunch. I'd been playing the same two songs for about the, an hour or so. Mm-hmm. Didn't have an answer. And after three weeks, um, I didn't get an answer. And then I called and said, what do, what do I have? They said, you have, you have three choices. Kesha, Allison Arihita, or Adam Lambert. And uh, I said, you know what? I'll do Adam Lambert because I remember him from American Idol doing the the rock stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, well, are you familiar with the AMA performance? No, I'm not. Tell me about it. Fill me in. <laughs> okay. Now, you're gonna make me get on YouTube after we're done talking. <laughs> okay. 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 So you know Yellow Card, and you know how it was with Yellow Card. So this will make a lot of sense. Um, so when I was, a uh, yellow card, I would get on stage and I would wear shorts and my tank and I'd be comfortable if I get do my thing, you know, have you ever seen dodgeball? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Remember that scene where, uh, they bring out the wrong uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I know where this is going. <laughs> So take in mind, this is my first major performance since Yellow Card, uh, you know, hiatus. So I'm like excited. It's televised. It's the American Music Awards. You know, it was at the Nokia Theater. I don't know what it was called now, but it's the Nokia Theater. It's thousands of people. And uh, Nicole Kidman and Val Kilmer were in the trailer next to me. And, and they were standing outside. And I was just like walking by. And I'm like, oh, look. That's Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Val Kilmer. And next thing you know, literally just happened like that. I get this box, you know, comes, you know, on this little like push cart and 
the tr- our band trailer was separate from Adam Lambert's trailer. And on a gig like this, you don't really meet, you know, the singer until later in the time. And we were fortunate to have met him before then because Adam's such a, he's a great dude. He really is. He, he's a sweetheart. He's a great dude. And um, let me tell you something. When they pulled out the uniforms out the box, and it took two people to get the jeans out, the pants on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and a leather top and uh, assless chaps that were going around. I said, you know what? What did I say? <laughs> uh, I was like, I, I don't, I don't know what, uh, uh, huh? But I just, I said, you know what? Hell, fuck it. Let's just go out there and do our thing. You know, this is what I'm here to do. I'm a former. I'm sitting behind the drums. So the fast forward, we're walking by everybody, and there's like, let's see, I, I'm gonna guesstimate probably 15 of us, band and dancers, Adam, all walking in bondage gear. <laughs> the stage, right? Which was a long walk. So we passed 50 Cent, Eminem, and they look at us like, what the hell? Well, we get to the stage, and Jay Z is getting off stage, and he, he comes up, and he just looks, and he looks down, he looks at everybody, and he just nodded yes. He was like, he was like, like, like almost like the nod, like, okay, okay, I don't know what I'm about to see, but you guys are ballsy. <laughs> I mean, we came out, there were people with leashes around their necks and stuff. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be crazy. What am I doing? I'm stepping on TV on, okay, this is the, let's do it. <laughs> but anyway, we got on stage, and the, 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 the stage was a big stage. It was like a huge, like, three-level stage, metal trusses and stuff, and the band was on the top. And, uh, all, you know, Adam comes out and does his thing. You know, and then like dancers are dancing on the second floor, blah, blah, blah. Bridge of the song comes up. Um, you know, walks up and he and I thought when we did camera blocking that he was gonna be up there, you know, just dancing with the band, you know. I had no idea what he was planning to do. Little did I know the bass fumbled and I looked over to my right, and next thing you know, it was just like Armageddon in Tommy's tongue, you know, in his mouth with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking and I'm just like, okay, um, <clears throat> all right, all right. So need to think ahead, you know. I was like, you know, what am I, I'm gonna make headlines right now? This is great. <laughs> 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 and uh, and uh, so we get off stage and um, it went from two shows, and because of it, you know what he did, um, it went from two shows to quite a long time out with him touring and uh, a great touring time that I had. What do you want for me was, was amazing to, to be able to experience with him. I mean, we played some shows that I can only have wished to have played with yellow card even today and, uh, or anybody, you know, for that matter. Yeah. And he's, we do. And Monty Pittman, uh, the guitar player, you know, he's uh, Madonna's um, uh, uh, musical director. Um, and something you probably didn't know, he actually got Madonna on stage to play Pantera New Level. Oh, that's crazy! If you if you look up if you look up online, uh, Madonna A New Level Pantera and watch that performance, it's just like black and white checkerboard. It, watch it; she's actually playing that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> live too, and it's live. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me! You got this to happen. But anyway, um, that's how the Adam Lambert thing happened. And, uh, and we're still friends today. Like, uh, I, I, I just saw him. Well, I say just saw him. It was during a pandemic. He came to a bar when I was um, doing security at a bar not too long ago. That's amazing. Let's talk about everything that's happened since Crash Party, This Legend, you know, all your other projects. Obviously, you're pouring a lot of heart into Evergreen Terrace right now and Crash Party. Where do you kind of see things over the course of the next year for you? Well, um, definitely a lot of music. Um, I'm, I, the next year, Evergreen's, Evergreen Terrace is talking about uh, going to Europe and UK again, which I'm super excited to do. Um, Crash Party, we're putting out a, our first record. And I'm super pumped. I wish I could let you hear a song right now. I'm so pumped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I can't wait for you to hear the new uh, Crash Party stuff. Um, or I say new Crash Party. 
our first debut crash party record um it, it's quite the record to listen to i really can't wait to let you hear it so as soon as if you guys are out there listening um definitely check us out as crash party with a k and uh we play right now in jacksonville and st augustine but uh, we're going to be releasing music um really soon so hopefully we'll be on tour and see you all soon so yeah and then evergreen yes we're super excited about evergreen terrace um I we're finally this is this has been a this is one for the bucket list for me um, because I've always wanted to record, you know, in a in this type of in what what we're doing, you know, like a hardcore band, you know, and tour. And I've met some of the sweetest people I've ever met, like touring with them. And they are some of the sweetest people I've ever met touring with them. You know, uh, Alex, Jason, Craig, Andrew, they're the nicest guys you'll meet. And to be able to be in a room with them, you know, and, and be able to write with all of them, you know, they're just, they're, they're great musicians like Crash Party. They're exceptional musicians, Evergreen Terrace. And then this legend with Ben Harper, uh, you know, we were bandmates in Yellow Card, you know, um, and then uh, Chris Castillo and then uh, Steven Neufeld. So we're the original lineup and we're getting ready to come up with a new record. We already have a bunch of songs ready to go. And uh, well, for pre-production and then ready to go. So we're super excited about that. And, uh, and then of course my dad and I are getting ready to record a Christmas record for next year. So it'll come out. So hopefully you guys will hear that too. And for those of you that are not aware, um, his dad is a fabulous trumpet player. He's played with Branford Marcellus, Sun Ra, Cab Calloway. Gosh, your, your dad's credentials and your credentials are kind of, similar and parallel to each other yeah i definitely learned everything that i do between he von barlow and max roach i've learned everything that i could possibly learn <laughs> about being a musician <laughs> you know my i i was on tour when i was born with my father literally i was born in paris france um and i was born on tour during bubbling brown sugar and my my father was a, was imitating a satchmo and my mother was the jazz dancer on the tour i was made and born on the tour it was a two year long tour oh wow and and stayed on tour for a period of time and then became like picked up my first pair of drumsticks as a baby on tour at that time and then i i was like you know what so tell me this dad uh <sighs> why do I smoke so much weed? <laughs> goes, well, I did have you in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a coffee house wrapped around my stomach in Amsterdam when you were little on tour. I was like, explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of laying into that pedigree and, and that history that you have, is there a project musically that you haven't done yet that you've had your eyes set on? Like something like outside of your normal bounds of the genres that you play in. Absolutely. Um, one that I can say for certain uh, would be probably Pantera, like that style. Yeah. Right into that. Just hard hitting riff, heavy groove. Yeah, just like, like if I, and if I were to get specific about it, um, I would say vulgar display of power to far beyond driven era. Yes. 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 What's your favorite Pantera track? My favorite one? Yeah. Whoa, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, God. I got to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All it's right. like pick, picking your favorite child, practically. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, mouth for War? Yes. Mouth for War. I was going to call that because that's my favorite one too. <laughs> my, I played in a band with a guy every time, right before we would start rehearsing, he would just play that over and over and over. And at the time I was like, fuck dude. Okay. Give it a rest. And now it's like, it's my most favorite Pantera song. Like I seek it out now. Hey, let's be real. There's not a single hardcore metal band out there right now that can mess with, with their sound. No, How that is as far as aggressiveness, and being true metal. And, and I mean, and, and the only two that can really, and I say this boldly, the only two that can really hold ground with this, I'm going to say is going to be like Slayer 
and Pantera because Slayer held to their their style. They never they never buckled. Gears. They never buckled. They never shifted gears. You know, they were they were the definition of what their genre of music was. You know, and I say was for a reason that I don't believe they can ever really be another Slayer. You know. Right. Or another Pantera without, you know, and, and and I know they're out there doing their thing, and I and I, it's a great lineup with um, Zach Wild on on guitar, you know, and, and stuff like that, and you get to see, you get to hear the music, you know, it's different for Pantera to do it right now because, it, it, and I say that in a, in a positive way, because it's not like the other members are sitting at home and they're going, oh, let me go out there and play these shows. No, they're they're dead. Right. They're not there. You know, there's no other way to get it, but they're giving the fans an opportunity to hear music. And um, I will say this, I did see them at Rockville and I, they put on a great performance. So, you know, for those of you that are going out to see the Pantera that are fans like me, that, you know, more than fans, like, I, I mean, I have dime bag playing his guitar. Look, man, dime. I met him one time and I became friends with Vinny Paul for many years, like probably, I mean, many, many years. You're talking, from the 90s all the way up through i mean till he died really you know mm -hmm. i mean I'm, i saw him right before he died i've passed out on dime's couch for a week straight you know <laughs> um and and this is something crazy you know yellow card would not have started if it weren't for me going to a pantera show and starting a band with Zach Morris in, in Jacksonville, Florida, and then Ben Harper picking up the bass on stage that one day when our bass player quit during the show. Yeah. Um, if it weren't for Pantera, none of that would have happened because I was so far immersed in my dad's footsteps of what he was doing that I didn't uh, focus my energy on it, you know, until I discovered Beavis and Butthead and, and uh, Headbangers Ball and, you know, stuff like that. Ricky Rackman, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell and, yeah. Uh, and and um and one night uh i was at dime's house after he, he was passed you know and uh it was one of the one of the seven nights we were passed out on his couch or i was <laughs> 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 whatever you were because the deal with dime's house was you didn't leave the house until you were sober the problem was you were never sober <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so Next thing you know, um, one night at the show, at, before I say the next part, this is important. At the show, th there was a moment. It was my first show, remember, my first rock show. And a dime came up to the barricade. And I made it to the barricade because I was that far immersed in the music, you know. <laughs> and, and he was playing. And, and he was right up on the barricade and I touched his lightning bolt guitar with my hand. And right then at that moment, I felt something, man. It was like the, the sound went away and I could see them rocking out. And I was just so into it. I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be a rock star. This is what I want to do. And I made it happen. And um, yeah. that night at Dime's house, after Dime had passed, Rita, I was on tour at my band Bound at the time. And we played, uh, uh, we played Ride for Dime. And uh, Rita brought out two guitars. One was the lightning bolt guitar and the other one was his oh, rebel. Shit. And and without thinking about it, she sat the lightning bolt guitar in my hand. Shit. In my hands. And it was not it was the one with the still had the blood stains in the neck oh. from his fingers. Oh. Never cleaned. Huh. It's crazy. And I sat it in my hands and I took that moment and I thanked it. I said, Hey, thank you, man, because I couldn't say thank you to him for giving me a career in person because he wasn't there. But I felt like that was my moment. It was done for a reason. And that's how I ended up at his house. You know, it was like that was meant to happen. I, I do believe in things like that happening. I do too. Wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. The, the serendipity of the world kind of speaking to us and like that karmic resiliency of, right. of these experiences. So speaking of which, like, how would you define your why for what you do now moving forward, having all these great experiences that you've had? 
to teach the younger generation and anybody that wants to learn and to be the better person to learn from, you know, whatever mistakes you have um, to learn from it and to also learn from whatever gains you have too. Yeah. And to, uh, to be the best human you possibly can to never take no for an answer. You know, um, if I could tell you how many times I've been told no and kept going, I'd, <laughs> you'd, you'd be surprised, <laughs> you know, uh, you know and also, and also learn to, uh, you know, remember life is short, you know, out there, this is for everybody. Life is short, you know? So, you know, you're not going to take anything with you when you die, but your own dignity, your, your, your self being and what, you know, what people, the image that you leave people to see of you when you go, you know, and that's the best thing you can leave for people is that. And so the best thing you can do is be honest person. Um, and definitely, uh, I want to teach people to forgive and move forward in your life in a positive direction because there's enough negative going on out there that, you know, it's not needed. You know, it's, it's definitely not needed. You know, like I said, there are things that I would do in a heartbeat, not to rehash them, but, you know, um, without even any thought. And, uh, I feel like it would be a really good move and, um, and, and a, in a positive direction, you know, give the fans what, what they want to see, you know, I mean, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the fans. We wouldn't have done what we have done if it weren't for the fans. You know, um, I appreciate every single fan on the planet. You know, I try to do my best to give them what, you know, th that's, that goes back to what I was telling you. Like, I, no, I don't stop working because I right. feel like if I stop working. I'm giving up on every fan that's out there in the world that's ever, you know, given a, t uh, given a shit about me in any sense, you know, of what I do and wanting to take that to the next level. You know, to the, and wanting to learn something from it and be a, a be a musician, be a, a and it could it could. I've had people come up to me before and say that we help them through you know through the war in the Middle East. You know, where they're they're in they were in Humvees. You know, and these are there's a whole crew of people. You know, where I went yeah. to shake one hand and it wasn't there, so I, I shook his other hand. You know, and they had just come in and they said, listen, you know, your song breathing got us through, you know, some treacherous moments, you know, where they, where they were being slaughtered, you know? And, I mean, those are things that you can't, you can't fabricate something like that. You can't say, Oh, look, I'm going to no, that's something that's a real heartfelt moment that that person, that individual is giving to you. That is that opening up to you it's the same yeah. way that when I went on Columbia house and got records and became a legitimate fan where you actually had to get a cassette tape and smell the record, look at the record, listen to the songs, you know, not now where you go through, you know, um, downloads or whatever, you know, uh, uh, you know, where you're like streaming and all streaming, that. Junk. Yeah. Streaming where you don't even get, the, you know, now you just get the song and you listen to a song, you know, but there are times where you can like actually expand your mind with it, with a record where you had the pictures and the pictures of the band, you can put your own thoughts to it. Yep. You know? And, um, I want to teach people to, um, to, to be successful and what you to, to figure out what you were put on this earth to do as a human being, you know, do what, you know, do what it is. Don't hide from it. Cause guess what? You don't know until you jump. I love that. I love that. You just stole my million dollar question that I ask every guest without even realizing it. My, my question normally is, is, What's your advice for making the world a better place? You just gave us about two minutes worth of that. And that's amazing. That's something that I absolutely love. I love that mentorship. I love that idea of paying your successes forward unto other people. Now, your manager texted me and told me that you had picked up a brand new endorsement and you've got a few endorsements. You want to drop name drop those? So I'm actually, I'm glad you said that. It was actually a very exciting day for me. Um, I actually just left uh, bike night. I have, I ride Harleys. I have two Harleys. And um, I just left bike night to uh, celebrate um, the fact that I just landed a cannabis drums deal. And I'm super excited because their drums are amazing. Cannabis drums is Man, when I heard them years ago and I fell in love with them and um, 
I was endorsed by another company. So I was like, all right, well, um, you know, I'm not going to jump ship like that. And um, now I've been a, a free agent because my, my company's no longer. And um, I approached him and now we're partnering up. So this is nice. great. I'm, I'm super excited. And cannabis drums, like I said, they make rock drums, jazz drums. So all around they're great. Amazing. Amazing. So cannabis drums and uh, soul tone symbols, a great, amazing company, amazing people too. The, the symbols are the best symbols I've ever played, to be honest with everyone out there who's looking to try a new symbol and they look into branding the artist, which is great. Um, next I've got my company, um, which is animal percussion. And uh, we were doing drumsticks with NFC chips in them. So now the artist has, you know, you can, have your information on there. You're not just throwing out a drumstick at the end of the night. You know, oh, you that's scan awesome. It, scan it on your phone and you can have your website, your, uh, your, you know, your, your store, your, whatever, your song, whatever you want on there. And it's on an NFC chip. So we're doing, uh, we're doing that. We also have a few other products that we're engaging into as well. Um, and then I have Evans drum heads, um, which I've been with Evans for man, what, almost 20 years now. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, what else do I have? Oh, SimPad. Um, SimPad's an endorsement. You're just doing it all. You're just doing it all. I absolutely love that. Why don't you tell my listeners where they can find you and your projects online? Okay. Well, so um, at, you can go to Crash Party. It's hard to say right now because it's all brand new. You know, we're right. really up right now for you to hear on that. But um, as far as Evergreen Terrace, check out Evergreen Terrace on our socials. You know, um, also, as soon as we get Crash Party up and going, where we have like our, our music and stuff, um, we'll, we'll, I'll be able to let you know. Maybe we can get back on and do another one. Hell yes. That's what I was just going to say, man. Podcasting is such an amazing, like, connective experience where you just make friends all over the world, no matter what they're into and such. And I am so glad we got to connect for this episode, man, for real. Yes, me too. Thank you so much. And um, it's been an honor being here and you know, this has been great. So for all of you out there, um, definitely check us out. Um, I have crash party. I've got evergreen terrace. And of course this legend that's getting ready to, to do some stuff. You know, we'll be, we're, we're playing a lot of shows around town. Like we're, we're, we're playing at a place called uh, Iggy's on my birthday and uh, it's February 16th. It's a uh, music by peacock.com is uh, the music. That's where you can hear the music. Yeah. I'm super excited for all this stuff. LP man. I'm glad to know you. I'm glad to now call you a friend. The world is a much better place with you in it, my friend. Well, thank you. It's a much better place with you in it as well. What a fun chat. What an interesting guy. Make sure you follow Longinu on social media. He is under just the name Longinu on Instagram. Give him a follow. Follow Music by Peacock on Instagram as well. You can check out all of LP's projects there. Great conversation. While you're being generous with the follows, make sure you're following Caught on the Mic on all social media platforms. Rate me with that five-star or ten-star rating on your favorite podcast platform. It helps drive traffic to the show. Visit me, www.caughtonthemic.com. More cool stuff on the way soon. This has been Caught on the Mic with Michael Clark. I'm Michael Clark. Until next time, thank you.